I want to welcome everybody to the resurgence, a celebration uh, by St. Genevieve Art Guild of the St. Genevieve Summer School of Art, 80 years later. Pretty awesome. Uh, I'm Rick Bears, and I've been asked to represent uh, the Guild tonight. Thank you very much. I'm honored to do this. Um, we're here to celebrate the cultural heritage, heritage of the art colony and the Summer School of Art that has thrived at this very location so many years ago. So we're going to be offering five opportunities uh, for you to participate in its resurgence. Uh, all these activities took place 80, year, 80 years ago, right here, which I, I just find that amazing. It's kind of cool. Imagine the colony is right here. Uh, number one, you have three opportunities to take art instruction for a fee. Number two, you have two opportunities to paint outdoors with a group for free. Number three, you have two opportunities to view an art exhibit with a colony member. Number four, you have three opportunities to participate in a forum discussion of art topics. And number five, actually one of my favorites, uh, you have uh, one opportunity to party on the river ferry with <laughs> wine and food. <laughs> Barry called me earlier this week and told me about that one. I said, I'm in. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, the, resur uh, the resurgence of summer school includes three weekends of classes by three renowned regional artists, which uh, one is here tonight. Uh, please welcome Dan Woodward. Okay. <laughs> Dan, raise your hand. Oh, Billy O's here. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so yeah, so I, I, you couldn't couldn't have made it any more perfect. <laughs> so uh, first of all, Dan is a very talented real estate painter uh, and an accomplished art instructor, but he's also a music composer and a poet. Quite the Renaissance man. So my age. I've been <laughs> long enough to do all that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great to have you here. I don't know if you remember me from the uh, uh, we met at the last plane air event. Oh, yeah. So nice, nice to have you here. And of course, Billy O. Billy O, wave again. Oh. Uh, so of uh, those who don't know Billy O, he's uh, he's well recognized and a premier planer, landscape painter, not only regionally, nationally, and internationally travel all over the place. A little story about Billy O about 10 or 12 years ago. When did you leave Merits and start painting full time? Uh, that was that's getting close to 20 years. 20 years, ago. yeah, it's a time uh, eight, 18. So I was so impressed with Billy O and I knew him a little bit when he, you know, it's just his background at Merits and I emailed him and called him out of the blue and asked him if he'd meet with me. He didn't really know me that well and he did. Very gracious, we met at Bill's Pancake House. And, you know, he spent a long time just, uh, you know, turning me on to Maynard Dixon, some, some, uh, some Western artist that was in my style. So it's a very generous guy, extremely talented artist. Thanks for being here Billy o, and being a part of this. Um, okay, a few spaces remain in these classes and tickets to the ferry cruise for those here tonight are $30. Please see Carolyn over there. Uh, and she also has a full schedule of, um, of events available on the table. There you go. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, so now I'd like to introduce the Guild's current president, Mary uh, Pura, and to tell us about the exhibit that's going to open this evening. Mary Pura is sober but can't stand up. <laughs> yeah, that's what you always say. Yes, that's what I always say. Right. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you being here. I don't know how many of you are students of the history of the colony, but one of their main missions was education. And when we have our summer school, that's what we're doing. We're going to prolong that mission. And we have tonight a man who was a local man. He started out as a student at the Summer School of Art. He graduated to being a teacher. This is the only person I know of that did that, but there may be others I'm not aware of, but we know about Matt Ziegler. And tonight, we are fortunate to have Jim Baker with us, who has been a student of the art colony, and particularly Matt Ziegler, his, his interest. Jim was the administrator of the Felix Valley House for 30 years. When I came to St. Genevieve 28 years ago, Jim was one of the first people I met. And we're so thankful. He has now 
living part time in Florida, but he has come back for our event tonight and to help us out with the Matt Ziegler exhibit. So I would like for you all to welcome him. Would you say a few words for us, Jim? Thanks very much, Mary. It's a uh, pleasure to be here with you all tonight. Um, when I first got into the discussion of this with a, a couple of the Guild folks, I was really thrilled about the idea of a resurgence of the, the art school part of the art colony concept. Because as you mentioned, I think education was really a key component of what they did, um, not only amongst themselves, but for young people and not so young people. If you look at some of the photos from the art colony, um, you're going to see a pretty wide range of ages. Um, I guess Matt, to me, has a special place uh, in, in the history of St. Genevieve because, as you know, I started out across the street at the Felix Valley House, but in the late 1980s, the state of Missouri purchased this property, the, the Shaw House property, which was uh, owned by Matt's family for decades and decades and decades, and this is where Matt had his operation. Um, I later discovered what the, the history was from the 30s with the art colony uh, being in place here as well. And I just mentioned to somebody, I was looking back through the art colony book today and kind of looking for details in the photographs, and one unidentified photograph, I recognized the concrete and the stone right there from the corner of the stone kitchen building. So. Uh, you know, you, you recognize that the pictures are taken in this very place where we are today. And for me, um, as a person interested in historic sites, I believe the connection of, of place uh, it does so much to make history kind of more vital mm -hmm. for us all. Um, we don't have to go someplace else and look at a picture of the Shaw House. We don't have to go someplace else and hear a description of the Shaw House. Uh, you're here. And so, uh, if we do nothing more than regather on this spot every year, I think we're doing our, our job for, for the art colony. Um, this concept of a resurgence of the education part, I think, is a terrific way to make what they did meaningful, you know, 80 years later. So, um, when we discussed the exhibit for Matt, I saw an opportunity uh, to, to kind of get involved again in some things like this because. Um, I had recently seen a lot of wonderful artifacts, not just artwork, but artifacts uh, from Matt's time. And we owe a debt of gratitude to our good friend, Betty Garrity, who, who's no longer with us, but it was through the foresight of Betty that we can have uh, these wonderful pieces of artwork and the extra stuff that goes along with it that fills out the story. Um, Betty was a collector in every sense of the word. Yes. A collector of friends, a collector of art, a collector of objects, furniture, um, but she collected the minutia of things as well. So if any of you want to see a clipping from a newspaper article about art in St. Genevieve anytime through the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, come to me because I can help you. <laughs> Those things that to many people would seem vastly unimportant, are very important because of the mass of this collection. So what I discovered was Betty had, had uh, taken these things uh, and collected them from Matt. And I heard her speak many, many, many times, I can't tell you how many times, about all the time she spent with Matt. Matt Ziegler was a real inspiration to Betty. One letter I, I saw, which I didn't include because the letter was actually a, about Betty. It was written to a third party and they discussed Betty, and he said, I believe Betty's work is so good, she is the only artist here in St. Genevieve who could get into the New York shows. Huh. And for that was in the, you know, in the 50s, I believe, or 60s. It was a, a really remarkable kind of tribute to Betty. They had a wonderful connection, and um, uh, in fact, I benefit from that connection because there was a note from Matt that he sent to Betty over in Farmington, where they lived first, that said, there's a great historic house for sale in St. Genevieve. You better come over. Well, Betty and Bud did that in 1973 and bought the Dorlack house out on St. Mary's Road, which is where I live now. So uh, I always thought Betty and Bud were, were my, uh, my people who I had to owe that to. But now I discover that Matt had a part in that picture, which is fitting. Uh, over the years that I worked here, I came to have a sense of Matt Ziegler 
because uh, if you spend enough hours in a place that someone has created and inhabited, you get a, a different sense of who they are and maybe the way they think and, and those kind of aspects. Matt was an artist. He was an artisan also. Um, and they asked me to tell you just a briefly bit about the history of this place. Um, and the, the house itself dates to about 1819. It was originally a, a, a two-room uh, mercantile store owned by Jean-Baptiste Rosier. Dr. Shaw bought the property in 1837. Benjamin Shaw and, uh, added the addition to the house and enlarged the house. But in 1841, built the stone kitchen here in the back, which Matt described as the old stone trading post, which may have a little historic license applied to that attribution. But uh, he was uh, interested in preservation, and that building survives, I think, largely due to Matt's interest in it. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar enough with old St. Genevieve from the 1950s and early 60s, but there was a wonderful building called the Pratt Stone Warehouse, which stood on the corner of Mark Merchant Street and 4th Street, directly across from the Gibor Bell Lighthouse. That wonderful stone uh, building got, unfortunately, torn down. But Matt Ziegler came to the rescue and took the stone. So the building that's here, this L-shaped structure, is Matt's building. And he built it as a gallery, as a studio, as a, a workplace to create this ambiance here in, in the courtyard. And the, the stone, or the brick uh, wall as well. So those are, those are part of Matt's creative sense and his, and his ability to create a place which was attractive and charming. Matt also had a restaurant in the house, and we have some really great artifacts um, from the restaurant days uh, in the house. You'll be amazed to find that you could get a T-bone steak here for about $1.75 <laughs> at one point. Um, but bringing all these parts of the puzzle together is what is wonderful to me. The, the exhibit, which I hope you enjoy, the artifacts, which kind of round out the artwork and, and make you have a sense, and the fact that uh, it's due to the the constancy, I'd say, of the art mentality here in St. Genevieve. It didn't happen overnight. It's a con constant kind of factor in, in what people think about and what people value here in St. Genevieve over uh, 100, 150 years that has kept this art idea alive in St. Genevieve. And uh, that's through Matt Ziegler, and it's also through you, through the next generations that come along. And I think we're all standing on the shoulders of those art colony folks. Uh, with brush in hand. So I hope you enjoy your weekend and in fact enjoy the whole month of activity. Yeah. Yes. I have something I forgot to mention. It's very important and I see Leslie Barker who's uh, in charge of the uh, Boulders Museum is uh, has got an exhibit that's going to be going on at the Jean-Baptiste Ballet House and it is work by Fred Conway, one of the teachers here, and his students. So it is going to be open tomorrow, all day tomorrow, and in the afternoon you have the opportunity to see a little girl, eight-year-old girl, in French costume while the artists are there painting her. It was, uh, we have living in St. Genevieve an 88-year-old woman who was a model for the summer school, and so we are now bringing our own little eight-year-old in to model. But the display will be well worth your visit, and I hope you can all make it. Indeed. So thanks, everybody, and have a great time, and enjoy yourself, and keep that art spirit alive. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, turning on here, um, we'd also like to acknowledge the, the generous loan of art from uh, Mr. Max Okenfuss. Uh, uh, who wished to share a privately held Ziegler painting and the 1930 sketch from which it was made uh, with, this, uh, with the citizens of St. Genevieve. Uh, is Max here? No. Okay. okay. So, anyway, that's, that's a great, that's very generous of him. Um, acknowledgements are also due to the following guild members. Please raise your hands. <laughs> First, the committee who made this all possible. Mary Pura, for heading everything up. Carolyn Bach, for keeping track of everything and helping write this speech. Thank you. Uh, Jean Rissover, 
for interpretive and promotional materials. Oh, Jean had to leave, that's right. Uh, Karen Glines for establishing the instructional component and maintaining our St. Louis connections. Yeah. Karen? Yeah. Karen was a past president of the St. Louis Arts Guild. Yes. And she's on the board, so we're very pleased to have her help us out. And also, Karen's uh, also contributor to uh, several uh, art books also. So, yes. nice to have you here, Karen. Uh, thanks to Juanita Wyman for maintaining the colony tradition in years past. <laughs> to Becky Millinger for recruiting, recruiting her husband, Ed, <laughs> who's making the video for this event for prosperity reasons. And to Bob Mueller for researching and presenting the story uh, of the colony uh, WPA murals, and finally to Bonnie uh, Samuelson and others for organizing the food and drink. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Um, and then we'd also like to uh, thank our sponsors for this event, the Missouri Arts Council, St. Genevieve uh, County Community Foundation, the uh, Felix Valley Historical Site for providing this venue the Boldock House Museum for providing a second colony exhibit, Crown Valley for providing the wine, and all the volunteers who donated their time. Uh, and thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, we really do appreciate it. So please take in the uh, exhibit, enjoy the food and drink, and stay with us um, for the first forum at 7 o'clock, 20 minutes away, in the room next door, I guess that's in here, Larry. Um, uh, let's see, we're, all, we're extremely fortunate to have with us tonight a friend and esteemed uh, co uh, scholar, Dr. Julie Dunn Morton, curator of the Fine Arts Collection of the St. Louis um, Mercantile <laughs> Library. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Julie will be discussing uh, historical uh, perspectives. So we sincerely hope you enjoy uh, this evening and that you return several times over the next uh, two weekends for many of the other interesting art events brought to you by the St. Genevieve Art Guild. Art was important in St. Genevieve 80 years ago, and still today we can say art happens here. So enjoy yourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Channel 7 and 98 TV and web broadcasting are made possible through contributions and donations from viewers like you. Thank you for your support.